We are in the final stretch of the midterms, and everything from the economy to the fate of democracy is on the ballot. My next guests are a dynamic duo when it comes to using their platform to get out the vote. Joining me now, actor, singer, and activist Mandy Patinkin and his wife, actor, writer, and activist Catherine Grody. Mandy, Catherine, welcome back to The Sunday Show. Good to Thank be here. you. It's great to be here. Okay, listen, we are two days out, and races in key battleground states are looking real tight. How are you feeling about Democrats' chances? Catherine, you go first. I'm feeling excited. I am feeling optimistic. I am not listening to one darn pundit. They, I didn't listen to, I haven't listened to them since 2016. They're not aware of feet on the ground. They're not aware of the hands knocking on the doors, Jonathan. I am feeling that people are really coming together about the enormous issues at stake mm -hmm. here. Just little things like truth and democracy and kindness and humanity. So I'm feeling optimistic. Mandy, do you share Catherine's optimism? 100 uh, percent. The Democrats are going to have a wave. I believe it deeply. I believe it because of decency and humanity. People are decent at heart all across the board, Republicans, independents, Democrats. And when they see um, individuals bad mouthing an 82 year old man who was hit by a hammer, making fun of him, getting a crowd to laugh, to get elected, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This hurts their hearts. When they see election deniers demonstrating to 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 throw uh, to to throw apart this democracy, it, it, a republic if you can keep it, said Benjamin Franklin. We are on the verge of losing it. They know the difference between law-abiding citizens and criminals like Donald Trump and all of his cohorts, and they want a country that speaks to each other with kindness, attention, and and decency. And, and that is why I believe when all of these Americans go to the polls, they will vote for people that will care for them and their country and their children and their grandchildren. People are smart. But, Catherine, here's my well, question. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. No, go ahead, Jonathan. No, I'm just You've wondering. you got a word in edgewise. What, 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 what about folks who are, who are voting Republican? Leave aside the decency piece. They're voting Republican, no matter the candidate quality, because all they want is for Republicans to have the majority in the Senate. They want the power. Decency be damned, if I may yeah. say that. Well, you Sunday. know, I don't know what I don't really know how to speak to that avaricious, grotesque need for power. I could name a lot of people that are on my, you know, human remediation list, Jonathan. I just don't believe they're the majority. That's all. And, you know, I have a Buddhist brother who says, why put out your fears um, until they're real? Right now, I'm just putting out the faith that those people that are hungry grabbing, frankly, Jonathan, one of my fantasies that I amuse myself with, I'd like to put Mitch McConnell and Herschel Walker at an island together for two months, <laughs> have them have a decent discussion, okay? You know, look, I don't understand the grab for power regardless of all the people that it affects. I don't understand it. So I am hoping that there are more people that want to come together from all walks just to have a democracy, to have climate relief change, to have infrastructure, all the extraordinary things this administration has passed in an impossibly divided Congress. So I don't know how to speak to them. I'm, I'm I'm trying to be open to having a conversation with anybody that wants to talk policy. I can't have a, a conversation with somebody that denies reality. You know, I happen to believe the earth is round, so I'm going to go with that. <laughs> uh, Mandy, I, I'm taken by your, your decency um, pitch, and I, and I am with you. But a lot of us, and you, both you and Catherine included, we have seen a lot of indecent things. What will it say about us as Americans if the indecent actually win? It can happen, Jonathan. It's happened before in history. We all know it. Uh, people are campaigning for it all over the world. Uh, it used to be monarchies, uh, uh, fascists, uh, demagogues, kings. Uh, that's what this country was formed to try to avoid. Um, to uh, represent the people so that they could have a voice, so that their vote meant something. 
That's what it'll go back to. It'll be go, go back to a monarchy. This democracy is a baby. It's only a, it's only a few years old in the timeline of history. True. And don't think that it can't happen. There are people that want it to happen. They're trying to destroy our democracy. Those who can't accept the results of an election. An election is a game. Don't go to a baseball game or a football game or a soccer game or a basketball game if you can't accept the fact that there'll be a winner and a loser. That's why you're going to the damn game, for God's sake. And so don't think that you can't lose the privilege of being an American, the privilege of having the greatest power in the world, which is your vote. There are individuals in this country who want to, of course, have all the power in the world. They're bullies. You must not be bullied. You must not be afraid. Do not listen to the polls. Ignore them, ignore them, ignore them. Don't make the mistake that people made in the past. We've learned that they mean nothing. Go out and vote. Vote for your heart. Vote for your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren and the unborn children of this country, this democracy, and take care of some of the sins like slavery and what's happened to Native Americans and eradicate those sins by doing the right thing from this moment forward for humanity and be the symbol that America should be for the world all over the world. They need a leader, a teacher, a parent.